Bradley hits the entertainment bullseye every week with her hard riding. Straight shooting. This icing sure is good. I'm glad, Tag. I want everything to be just right for Debbie's party. Hi, Debbie. Hello, Annie. Tag and I were just talking about you. You're yeah. coming to dinner tonight, aren't you? Yes, of course. Very kind of you to invite me. Nonsense. You don't go out enough as it is. Frank Mason's coming, too. He's a bachelor. He's got a big ranch. Tag. Well, gosh, Annie, I thought Miss Debbie liked to know. Lofty said all the boys had their eyes on you. Lofty was was just joking. I must go now, but I brought you some pencils, Tag. Oh, thank you. Don't forget, Debbie. We'll be expecting you. Well, I won't, but if I'm late, don't wait for me. I, I just remember I have some papers to correct. Now you've done it. She's so shy, she probably won't even come at all. I guess she's still being faithful to the memory of that man she was engaged to, David Ingram. Well, gosh, Annie, if he's gone, he's gone. What's the use of sitting around mourning when there's plenty others to take his place? Tag. And that's what Lofty said. Oh, man. They have no idea of romance. You better get your gun, Annie. A fellow named Buck Kirby just shot Sheriff Carver over near Lakeview. He sent me this wire that he's heading this way. What I know of Ward Carver is all bad, but so is shooting an officer of the law. You ever heard of this Buck Kirby? No, he's new to me. Can I go with you, Annie? No, Tag, you're due over at Miss Debbie's right now for your drawing lesson. Gosh, Annie, I'll never be an artist. <laughs> Maybe not, but learning to draw will help you to see what you look at and remember what you see. Annie's right, Tag. I suppose you ran into an outlaw one of these times. It'd be a lot easier to draw a picture of him than try to tell what he looks like. Oh, boy. Like he left the trail there, boss. How far do you figure Buck Kirby's ahead of us? I'd say about half an hour. We'll have to shorten that to shooting distance. He'd like Mazes to do this, sweetheart. But I've got to grab that stagecoach. With Rush Harper and Sid Muncy on my trail, I don't dare take any chances. Take care of yourself, beautiful. And start traveling. She's a beauty. She sure is, Lofty. I wonder who she belongs to. Search me. Hey there! Anybody belong to this mare? She could have thrown a rider. No sign, Annie. I'll check her brand. Whoa, whoa. 
Oh, easy, girl, easy. Nobody's gonna hurt you. The Rocking R.H. brand. A harper spread over in Lakeview. Lakeview? That's Buck Kirby's stomping ground. Uh, could be his horse. I better take her along. Oh, oh easy, girl. Easy, easy, easy. Doesn't look like she takes to strangers. Maybe I better make her acquaintance. Lofty? Yeah, thanks to you. Well, why were they shooting at you? I don't know. Guess this is Kirby's horse. If it is, maybe they mistook me for him. Well, Buck Kirby's a wanted man. If they're hunting him, why'd they run away? I don't know. We better question Kirby when we see him. Looks like we pulled a boner, boss. That girl run a $20 headpiece. She sure can shoot. The fellow she was with has Kirby's horse. What do we do now? Find Kirby. You're doing fine, Tang. But don't you think the ear's a little bit too long for the rest of the face? Look, hold your pencil like this. No, measure on it with your thumb. Oh. Mr. Ingram was sure a good-looking guy. I bet he wasn't afraid of anything. No, he wasn't, Tag. Or he wouldn't have gone with a posse into Mexico after the Apache kid. The kid hated white men. He stalked and killed them like they were wild animals. David said no one was safe as long as he was alive. Oh, you should have seen him when he rode away. So proud and straight in the saddle. But he never came back. Mr. Ingram must have been one swell guy, all right. thought you were dead. Well, she'd be glad to hear that you're alive and kicking. Miss who? Miss Deborah Scott. You know the girl you're engaged to? You surely couldn't have forgotten her, Mr. Ingram. She thought you were killed by the Apache kid. The Apache kid? I guess you've already met my little brother, Tag, and this is Deputy Sheriff Lofty Craig. Oh, yes, but... Uh, Come into the office. We'd like to talk to you. Oh, now, just a minute. Oh, uh, don't feel like that. Everybody in the whole county knows about you. We're all friends of Debbie's. She teaches school here. I think I'd better explain. Uh, you don't have to explain to us. What did Debbie say when she saw you? Well, I haven't seen her. You see, I... He just got off the stage. Do you mean she doesn't know you're here? Lofty, bring him over in about 15 minutes, but don't make it any later. She's waited long enough. Oh, hello, Chet. Hello, Eddie. You're just the man I want to see. Any news about Buck Kirby? Not yet. But we'll nail him if he's in this territory. You know, shooting the sheriff isn't tolerated in these parts. Buck Kirby ought to be hanged. Mr. Osgood's the editor of the Weekly Bugle. Say, Chet, here's a real piece of news for you. What? This is Mr. Ingram. Mr. David Ingram. Not Miss Debbie's David. Well, I'll be darned. Say, this is gonna make banner headlines. You know, you're supposed to be dead. Gosh! But, Annie, what's this all about? Why did you want me to put on my best dress? You'll find out. I want you to sit right here in this chair, facing the door. You act as though I'm 
going to have my picture taken. Well, I want you to look like a picture anyhow. Let's see. Oh, that's perfect. Here they come. Here's your surprise, Debbie. You're David. Debbie. Go away. Please go away. That's all I ask. Just go away. Go away. You're not David Ingram. You, you don't exist. You never existed. But, lady, look. I... Please go away. There's no such person as David Ingram. If that's the case, then why do you have a drawing of me? That, that's just a sketch I made of a man I saw at a rodeo. I never expected to meet him. When I first came here, I, I couldn't let them think that there was no one. That there never had been anyone before in my life. So I... I made up the story. There never was a David Ingram. I used David Ingram to hide behind. I guess my coming here has kind of put you in a spot. All I can say is I'm sorry. I wouldn't hurt you for anything. <laughs> Tell you the truth, I'm kind of in a jam myself. I came here hoping Annie and Lofty could help me out. I've always heard that they were square shooters, but when that newspaper fellow started talking about hanging Buck Kirby, I, I thought the simplest thing was to string along as David Ingram. At least until I could talk to Annie and Lofty alone. Your Buck Kirby? Yes. Oh, but look, I didn't do all those things they say I did. You've got to believe me. I do believe you. But I can't cause you any more trouble now. So I... I guess we'd just better tell them, Mr. Kirby. I've made a fool of myself, but... I was so afraid and so alone. Now, I'll be the laughing stock of the whole county. Oh, no, maybe not. Maybe we can figure some way out. That is, if you don't mind my being David Ingram for a little while longer. You're the only David Ingram there'll ever be. There's his horse. How can you be so sure he's here? Where else would he go? He's got to eat. There isn't another town in a hundred miles. Howdy. Howdy. You mind if we water our horses? No, I thought it's half hour. Nice town you got here. Yep. Get many visitors? Nope. We're looking for a fellow we know. Young fellow. About 35, tall, dark, good looking, wearing mostly brown. Have you seen anybody answering to that description? Yeah, I saw that fella come in on the stage. Thanks. Hey. Don't you want to know where you can find him? We sure do. Well, the last I saw of him, he was going over to Annie Oakley. Thank you. You're welcome. No charge for information. Hope we can get the buck before he spills to the law. He knows too much. Here, what are you drawing? Just a horse. Wow. <laughs> Not bad. I couldn't do as well myself. Keep it up, kid. You'll be a great artist one day. Hi, Annie. Got an answer to that wire we sent to Lakeview. It seems that Buck Kirby was running for office against Sheriff Carver. He had the election in the bag when he met Carver at his house and shot him. Carver was unarmed. Yeah, that's what worries me. Because from what I can find out about this Kirby, he isn't the trigger-happy kind. In fact, he bends over backwards to give the other fellow a square deal. Who told you that? Frank Mason. He used to ride with him. Frank Mason? Oh, Lofty, I forgot. We invited him for dinner. <laughs> yeah. But when he found out about David Ingram, he changed his mind. <laughs> Debbie and Mr. Ingram in the next room. But what are we going to do? I don't know yet. One thing's certain, I'm not going to get you mixed up in this. I'm already mixed up in it. You mustn't think of me, but... That's one thing I don't seem to be able to help. I don't care anymore. At least not about myself. 
It's you I worry about. But you've got to tell Annie and Lofty. Hello, Tag. Hi. Nice day, isn't it? Yes, isn't it? in there with a girl, the window's open. I got a clear view of the whole room. You ain't aiming to do it here, boss. Annie Oakley's the dame who shot your rain into. You scare too easy, Sid. I'll handle this. Get the horse. Dinner will be ready in a few minutes. Come on, Tag. I need some help. I'm busy, Annie. Well, you can be busy in the kitchen. Oh, Tag, shame on you. Well, that's what they were doing when I came in. Looks like you two are making up for lost time. <laughs> Who are they? Just a couple of men at the livery stable. Oh, I forgot to tell you. They're looking for you, Mr. Ingram. And they sure are tough customers. Well, those are the men that shot at you. Yeah. Shot at you. Well, if they did, they made a mistake. They were gunning for me. Keep out of this. And the law around here. This is my fight. He'll get his head blown off. Ha! Buck Kirby. Let's get our horses lofty. I'll take that gun, Mr. Kirby. Did Debbie tell him? Nope. Your mare did. She didn't start fighting when you hit the saddle. You mean Debbie knows who you are? I told her. She isn't in on this, though, and don't try to put anything on her. I came into town looking for you two. You can ask Debbie. I needed your help. Rush Harper framed me. Harper? He's a big cattle man. He's also the brains behind all the holdups and rustlings and killings in Lakeview County. Sheriff Carver was only a front man for Rush. When he saw that I might win the election, he called me out to his house and offered me $10,000 to leave town. When I refused, he drew on me. But when Carver was found, he was unarmed. If he was, why did Rush take a chance on shooting me at your house? And if they were lawmen, why didn't they come in openly instead of setting an ambush? You know, Rush has a hideout up in the hills, right where the county line crosses Brent's Corners. If you let me go along, I'll take you to it. Never mind. I'll take it from here. Keep an eye on him, Annie. You'll never make it alone. I'll manage. Watching the trail of Kirby like you told me, boss. Only this fellow came along. You fathead. All right. Tie him up over there. Or he'll be out of the way. Sure, boss. Buck must have put him on our trail. Now we'll have to get rid of both of them. Well, we could start with him. Now we'll take care of Buck first. If we work it right, we'll make it look like they shot each other. I'll go hide his horse. When you finish there, go on up to the lookout and keep watch.
You've got to believe me, Annie. Rush always has a guard posted up there. Lofty goes up that trail, he'll ride right into a trap. Why didn't you tell us this before? Why did you try and make us think you were David Ingram? Well, that's something you'll have to ask Debbie. Start right. Let's just hope we're not too late. Thanks, Annie. on Kirby. Curious, though. What happened to Carver's gun after he was shot? I took it off of him. Well, Buck came into town to report the shooting, just like a good law-abiding citizen. Lookout's always posted here. You wait here. I've got a little climbing to do. That's Debbie's story, Chet. There never was a David Ingram. And only the four of us know it. Well, that's one story that'll never be printed. Well, here's one story you can print, Mr. Osgood. Miss Deborah Scott has consented to become the wife of the next sheriff of Lakeview. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Osgood. Tag, aren't you going to wish Buck and Debbie good luck? Here, let me see what you... Oh, oh, Tag, that's the best drawing you ever made. Look. Oh, isn't that pretty? I mean, it was pretty nice. <laughs> 